So we've done most of the work with the master view controller. We've created the logic in order to load the data. What we want to do next is to display this data. And part of this is to also indicate how we want the collection view to look. So we have this data source method right here that we're going to need to update. And those methods are required. So you need to implement them in order to indicate how you want the collection view cells to, to look. That's always required. So we're going to go to the main storyboard. Here you're going to see the master view controller. And we have our cell, so part of the collection view. And on that cell, we have an image and a label right here. So that is a custom cell. So here we have specified a category view cell for this collection view. So we have two outlets, an image and a category label. So we're going to configure those ones in order to have a visual for the cells. So we're going to do that next. Let's go back to the master view controller where we're going to implement the data source methods. First, the number of sections. So that's going to be one. So it always defaults to one then the number of items in section and that's going to be the number of category objects that we have in our array so that's going to be categories count and that's going to be whichever number that you have in an object so you could decide to add more objects in that array so if you have seven or eight that's going to be then an integer eight which is going to be returned in that function next we're going to configure the cell so first we start by declaring this constant which is going to be cell and that's going to be cast as a category view cell just like our custom cell right here okay and we use also a reusable identifier so that's always required also in the main storyboard so we're going to go back to the main storyboard where you must specify an identifier like this using the view hierarchy you can go to the cell inside collection view and then check in the attribute inspector the collection reusable view which is going to be cell so we're going to use the exact same string right here and you could also put this one in a constant so here in that example we also we could also use this one so that's really up to you so i'm going to replace this one with the constant that we have at the top like so next we're going to then create a category object we're going to start configuring so the cell for each of the category and that's going to be whichever category at whichever row that we are so we're going to call the categories array then we have the index path which is a parameter in that function so ns index path that has two properties row or item and section so that's going to be row and this function works as a loop so it's going to loop through each item each object that we have in an array and return the corresponding object that we have at a specific index position then we're going to have an index so that's going to be another constant and we're going to use this function which is going to take a parameter as an integer parameter as an argument and that's going to return a random integer so we have this function right here so we're gonna have integer parameter then return an integer then we're gonna pass this num parameter to this function which is arc for random uniform in order to generate a random number between 0 and the value that we passed as a parameter in that case it's gonna be 10 so we're gonna see how we can use that in an instance in a moment then we're gonna have cell we're gonna start configuring so the outlet that we have on the custom cell so that's going to be category label then we're going to update the text property and that's going to be the category name so the category constant that we have just created and that's going to be the name so remember that we have this name property on the category object so we're going to assign this to the category label then we have the image that's another outlet on the custom cell and we're going to update the image property for that UI image view. And we're going to create an image. So that's going to be the UI image function. And for the name, which is going to be a string, that's going to be the cover that we just created. Although it's going to be something I'm going to need to create right here, my mistake. So I'm going to create a cover. So that's going to be another constant. And that's going to be category photos so we're gonna 
refer to the photos array that we have on each category object. And then we're going to have a random index position for this cover. So we're going to generate a random number, assign it to index, so that's going to be an integer, then pass this integer to this photos array in order to return a string, and then assign it to cover, and then we're going to pass this string as a name for the image. So we're going to have for every category a random image. So that's going to be very random. And because we need to specify that this is a file name with an extension JPEG, we're going to need to use the interpolation in order to use this variable. So that's going to be backslash and then cover for the variable and then JPEG. So we have this string, we use interpolation and then JPEG. And finally, what we do at the end is return cell. That's it. So let's try that. We're going to build and run. Going to look at the simulator. And here you're going to be able to that now we have our cell. So that's six total with an image and also a label that corresponds to the category name. What we want to do last is for each category names to have to be capitalized. So I'm going to put the category name in brackets and I'm going to call this function which is built in capitalize string. Very convenient. So I'm going to run again and this time you're going to be able to see that we have the category name which is capitalized. 